Hi there. Today I wanted to talk briefly about um, the experiences after my near-death experience. Uh, I mentioned in the last video that I did of that series that the weeks after my near-death experience were just as profound as the day of my near-death experience. And in fact, I went through a stage afterwards where I was terrified to go to sleep. Um, several reasons were happening for this terror. Um, one being that when I would turn all the lights off and lay down, all of a sudden there were um, these um, transitioned people floating above me. They were different than the energies that were communicating with me openly, and I hadn't quite wrapped my head around all of this yet, of course. So it's kind of like getting a brand new car and needing to learn how to use all the features. So that was one of the reasons I was terrified to sleep. The other reason was um, something inside of me was afraid that if I went to sleep that this would all go away. I had already recognized and come to terms with the fact that whatever was going on with me was a beautiful thing even though there were some things I didn't understand about it and um, just didn't want to go to sleep and wake up and, and, and have this be a dream I think. So the first several weeks I had um, very, very limited if any sleep at all and very um, very much was just receiving all this information and it was just flowing through me. I call it channeling, um, coming to me so quickly, so rapidly and I felt like I needed to write it all down. I was writing things down, drawing pictures. Um, at the time um, where we lived in New Zealand, the, the movie and the book The Secret was really big. I know it had been out for a while, but it for some reason had hit a big spurt in 2008 um, on our island, and in fact they had done a, a movie on it at the Spiritual Cinema, and so it was a big deal, and so um, someone had given me a copy before this had even happened that I never even picked up, yet after this happened, I read it cover to cover, and I was able to poke holes in it. Um, through all of this information that was being sent to me from um, guidance, if you will. I had drawn images of um, why this manifestation tool wasn't complete and I was able to communicate with animals in a way I never had before and insects. I remember sitting outside in New Zealand, we had a trampoline in the backyard and I was laying on the trampoline looking up at the clouds which I did a lot after this experience I literally would just lay out there and stare up into the sky and in seconds I was part of it um, so I, I was laying on the trampoline in the backyard and I was having an experience with um, beautiful bumblebees not um, not honeybees but the big fat bumblebees that are almost furry looking they almost look like they should be stuffed animals and they're huge in New Zealand um, and they um, they're quite friendly actually they'll come up to you and they um, hum around the flowers there and if you sit near that which our trampoline was right near the flowers uh, they will come around you and I had no fear of them at all and I was sitting one day on this trampoline kind of with my feet hanging over the edge and looking down at the water and just taking all the beauty in in this yard and the bumblebees were buzzing around me and as I sat with it a moment I recognized that they had a face and the face was a cherub I had experiences like this um, for these weeks some so profound um, that they moved me and I stayed with them for a whole entire day things like um, the bumblebee experience at this time you have to remember that I was still with my partner and I had committed suicide we can't forget that so there's this uh, piece that's still going on for those who I loved and were in my life that were watching me very closely right I had just killed myself um, I had committed suicide I was depressed and all of a sudden here I am I've shown up in this same physical body looking exactly the same and yet everything about me has changed my attitude I was joyous I was euphoric my, my likes um, my tastes my preferences all of those things had changed 
I was mild, I was calm, I wasn't anxious anymore as I had been before this experience. Um, there was a lot of um, hopeful conversation coming from me versus doom and gloom. And so my partner of all people who I of course lived with and, um, and knew he knew me the most was a witness to all of these changes. Um, he didn't tell me um, at first, but uh, he in fact would call his sister in the United States who was a counselor and he would say, okay, this is what Kelly did today. She talked to a bumblebee and she said its face looked like a cherub. Now, his sister being a counselor would listen to everything and she would ask very rational questions. Does what she's saying make sense? Is she exhibiting behavior that you're concerned about? She asked really good, thorough questions and his response was always, it makes sense, she's calm, she seems very at peace. So instead of calling the, the truck with the, you know, the white uniform, uh, each day he would come home from work and get my debrief from the day, check in with his sister on the debrief. I didn't know that was going on and just trust that whatever I was going through was was necessary. Um, in fact, at this stage in the ball game, probably around day three, I recognized that I needed to find someone I could talk to. I didn't know anyone like this. I didn't know anybody that I could, you know, it was fun to share these experiences that were happening for me, but I didn't have anyone to share them with that could relate to them. Um, I picked up the phone one day and um, at a recommendation of, um, I think it was my sister, I called um, the psychic Sylvia Brown. I didn't have um, the financial wherewithal to get a $500 one hour session with Sylvia Brown and wait a year to do so, but I did have um, the ability to um, call in and speak to someone who worked in her office. So I did so, and they were very kind and very sweet. And the gentleman that answered the phone, uh, which I was surprised to get a live person, um, listened to me and I told him what had happened. And I explained to him that um, at nighttime I was afraid to go to sleep and that I was very fearful that something um, scary was kind of coming into the room because I wasn't used to this hovering energy over me very very kind man on the phone he listened to me for probably 20 minutes share my story and he said look you're okay nothing scary is happening to you you know this from your experience there's nothing to be feared there's no sin there's no evil in addition to that you're not going to wake up and have this go away it's part of you now and just his kindness and just his um, taking those few minutes to really let me share what I was going through helped tremendously. Uh, from that stage I was able to sleep and I was able to trust what was going on and there was no more fear and I had stopped sleeping with the light on if I tried to sleep or clawing my partner with my fingernails out of fear. And this is a really good time to explain that even though this has become an experience for me I still have very human emotions. I still am a human being. And there are times when, even though I've had this experience, I believe my thoughts. I'm no different than anyone else. And that's one thing that I will continue to say is that I'm not special. I'm not unique. I'm not void or devoid of feeling. I'm not void or devoid of thoughts, just like anyone else. And I think that this experience certainly has to be pointed back to at times, even for myself. So these types of events continued to happen. I was able to visit with many transition loved ones that I knew in this lifetime and um, there were all kinds of transition people coming into my experience wanting me to let so and so know something um, I no longer could go into public places and not be approached by a transition energy asking me to relay some information. At first I didn't know what to do with this. Do I poke the girl behind the counter and say, hey, your dead uncle's here, he wants me to tell you this. I made a conscious choice that uh, I would 
really trust myself in this process and um, there's this gauge inside the body and I always say that the body is a, the truest of all pendulums um, if you really use kinesiology and you listen to the body it will never lie to you and I use that when information comes through is this to be shared and often it's not often it's not and it, often it's not anything significant and certainly I don't get information like you need to know you're going to die and I don't get information like your death is coming I don't and there's a reason for that I choose not to um, this work for me is about bringing love back to people and reminding them to reconnect with themselves everything that we need is within us if we're constantly looking outside of ourselves for some guru or teacher then we're losing sight that we are always that Certainly the guru and teacher will come in our experience because our mirrors are always pulling them forward. But don't ever lose sight that you have everything you need within you. These, these experiences continued for several weeks. Um, I was finally introduced to someone that lived on the small island where we lived who could understand these. Her name was Layla and she was a shamantic teacher. I knew nothing about shamanticism. Um, but she was one person who understood people who saw dead people and my partner lovingly said go even though finances were tremendously tight for us at this time he said we'll make it work and I will do a whole separate video on my experiences with Layla and she was a lifeline for me after this um, really guiding me to just trust what was coming through and not um, weigh myself down with it because one of the things that happens is there's this belief or this sense that you're responsible now for all the information that's coming through and making sure it gets to the right person and um, you can get caught in that trap really easily so again I'm wrapping up because we're at 12 minutes and Facebook is limiting my um, my uploads to 15 minutes which I actually think is perfect so I will do a follow-up segment on Layla and um, all that she did for me during this transition time of you know really accepting what had happened and understanding it for myself. I hope these videos continue to be helpful. As I've said, feel free to add me on Facebook if you haven't already. Send questions if there's something I've mentioned that you'd like me to elaborate on. I'm happy to do so without mentioning your name and um, I, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share this information with you guys. So the feedback has been wonderful and I, I just adore each and every one of you in your comments. So keep them coming. Okay? Thanks.